Well, let's look at how we can represent the function sine of x using a power series centered at x equals 0. Remind, uh, let me remind you that the formula for a Taylor series, which is uh, our method for calculating power series, is that the function is going to be equal to the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of the nth derivative evaluated at the center point, which in this case is 0, divided by n factorial times x minus the center point, all raised to the n. And so we want this to be equal to the sine of x, at least everywhere that it converges. And so in order to find this formula, we're going to need to compute the nth derivative of our function sine of x at x equals 0. All right, so let's start off by computing the derivatives without plugging in the point, and then we'll plug in the point later on. All right, so the first derivative of sine is cosine. The second derivative, which is the derivative of the derivative, would be negative sine. The third derivative would be negative cosine. And the fourth derivative would be all the way back to sine. And that pattern will then continue. Uh, it'll go sine, cosine, negative sine, negative cosine, and just repeat that over and over and over again. Okay, so now we need to plug in x equals 0 to these points. So f of 0, which is the sine of 0, what would that be? Well, if you think about your unit circle, we're talking about an angle of 0. So we're along the x-axis, and the sine gives you the y-coordinate. So that is going to be just 0. f prime of 0 would be cos 0, which is the x-coordinate at that same point, and that is 1. The second derivative is negative sine 0. Well, since we already know sine of 0 is 0, that's got to be 0. And the third derivative will be negative cosine of 0, which is negative 1. And from there, we'll see that the pattern is going to repeat 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1, 0, negative 1. And so sine of x must be equal to, we'll have the 0th derivative over 0 factorial times x minus 0 to the 0th power, plus uh, the first derivative over 1 factorial times x minus 0 to the 1, plus second derivative over 2 factorial times x minus 0 squared. And I'll continue on the next line. Then we'll have minus 1 over 3 factorial times x minus 0 cubed. And then it will be 0 over 4 factorial. Uh, and then it will be, uh, after minus 1, we'll go back to plus 1 over 5 factorial. And that will continue, and so on. And so we could simplify that. Notice a lot of those terms are multiplied by 0. And so I'm only going to write down the ones that are non-zero. We'll have 1 over 1 factorial x to the 1. So that's just x. Uh, the next one that's non-zero is the cubic term. And so that's going to be minus x cubed over 3 factorial, uh, and the next one after that will be plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial. And what you're going to see is that only the odd terms have non-zero uh, coefficients. And so the next one will be x to the seventh, and then the one after that will be x to the ninth, and so on. And of course, they're going to alternate between negative and positive due to the fact that our coefficients alternated between 1 and negative 1 when they weren't 0. Okay. Now, there is a nice, uh, more concise way of writing this. Uh, because we didn't have a nice, easy way of writing uh, the derivatives at 0, uh, it would be difficult to find a single formula here uh, where we sum from n equals 0 to infinity with x to the n. But if we change the exponent slightly, we can actually write this in the following compact form. So we'll let n equals 0 go from 0 to infinity. But instead of x to the n, we only want odd powers. And odd powers can be written as the, in the form 2 times an integer plus 1. Right? If n is 0, that gives us 1. If n is 1, that gives us 3. If n is uh, 2, it gives us uh, 5, and so on. All right? And notice the power of x is the same as the factorial that's in the denominator. So we'll have 2n plus 1 factorial. And so all that's left is we need to take care of the signs. And so we'll put a negative 1 out front. And we would like that to be positive when 
we are uh, on the first, the third, and the fifth term here, and negative for the others. And so if we write this as uh, negative 1 to the n, notice when I plug in 0, I get a positive 1. When I plug in 1, I get a negative 1. When I plug in 2, uh, I get a positive 1. When I plug in 3, I get a negative 1. So that's going to alternate back and forth. And so this is going to be a uh, completely equivalent way of writing the series up above. Okay, so there's our power series for the sine of x. And uh, that we actually looked at the example of that with Desmos in a previous video. And we can check to see where that converges using our uh, interval of convergence tests, which was just the ratio test combined with some other things. And so if we compute the limit as n goes to infinity of the ratio of consecutive terms, it's going to be 2 times n plus 1 plus 1 all over 2 times n plus 1 plus 1 factorial. So that's the n plus first term, and then we'll divide by the nth term, which would be 2n plus 1 factorial all over minus 1 to the n x to the 2n plus 1. Let's see, let's compute that limit. Uh, we'll need to simplify some things. First of all, this is just 2n plus 3. And the same upstairs, that's 2n plus 3. And 2n plus 3 factorial is the same thing as 2n plus 3 times 2n plus 2 times 2n plus 1 on down the line. And include all of the rest of the terms, I can just put 2n plus 1 factorial. And what that means is when I divide the 2n plus 1 factorial on the top with the one on the bottom, I'll cancel out those terms and be left with a factor of 2n plus 3 and a factor of 2n plus 2. Similarly, I've got these negative ones. I will cancel out n of those. And I can also cancel out 2n plus 1 factors of x. And I'll be left with just 2 on top. And so we'll have limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of negative 1, then we have two factors of x, and then in the bottom we'll have 2n plus 3 and 2n plus 2. And what I want you to notice is that the denominator there is growing to infinity, but the numerator is staying exactly the same size, and so this is going to approach 0. And if our ratio of consecutive terms is 0, well that's clearly less than 1, and so we would say this always converges. All right, so we now have a series representation for sine of x that works for every value of x. If you have enough terms, you can see that this is going to become as close as you could possibly want to the function y equals sine of x. And the pattern there is that we only include the odd powers which is not a coincidence uh, that sine is an odd function and only odd powers showed up in our series. That's actually going to be something that you can prove is true in general. Uh, but only the odd powers survived, and the terms alternate between positive and negative, and then they have the same uh, number as the exponent uh, in a factorial in the denominator.